so next, let's just talk about some fermentation concepts. Um, the, the title of my first book about fermentation is Wild Fermentation, and uh, I wish I could say that I made up that expression, but it's found throughout the literature, and wild fermentation describes something specific, which is fermentation that is based on organisms that are present on the food. Um, the contrasting style of fermentation is when you introduce some sort of a starter. And there are basically three forms of starters. The first is, um, you know, what I would call pure cultures, um, which is, you know, really a technology that has existed since Louis Pasteur uh, uh, isolated yeast about 150 years ago. Um, and many different organisms have been isolated and propagated. And, you know, the most common example of that would be the packet of yeast that you could find in any supermarket. Um, but, you know, you can buy all these um, other more specialized starters. I mean, I make, uh, uh, I make tempeh and I use a tempeh starter that's a, you know, particular uh, a fungal spore to, to make the tempeh. If you wanted to make, you know, camembert cheese um, in Toronto, um, you know, you would have to, it's made, uh, historically it was made as a wild fermentation in a certain cave system in France, but, you know, you could buy the particular organisms that you need and, you know, simulate the right uh, temperature and humidity conditions and, you know, make a camembert che like cheese here. But starters are available for all kinds of different ferments. But it's important to understand that, you know, all of these pure culture starters are, you know, a very, very recent technology in, in the history of fermentation. The more ancient kind of starters is basically you take a little bit of the last batch and introduce it into the next batch. And this is how people make yogurt. Um, and, you know, you never eat all your yogurt. You save a little bit and then you introduce some yogurt into to, uh, a fresh milk, you know, you you also with some temperature manipulation involved, um, and you make yogurt from that, and you keep on doing that, and you know there are families that have yogurt starters going back for generations and and generations. Uh, similarly, sourdough, um, you know, it's easy to start a sourdough as a wild fermentation, but once people have a vigorous sourdough uh, that has uh, uh, you know flavor and other qualities that they like, they try to perpetuate it, and you just you never bake all of your sourdough. You save a little bit of your sourdough and mix it with more flour and water and you continue that. Um, the, 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 the name for this style of a starter in the English language literature is backslopping, a nice vivid expression. Um, but you just save a little bit of the last batch into the next batch. Um, and this is how you know many different things have been fermented. I mean, historically breweries have practiced backslopping and save a, you know, a little bit of, of the previous batch of beer as the starter for the next batch of beer. Um, the third type of starter, uh, which I think is really interesting, um, are starters that have, have actually evolved into distinctive macrophysical forms that we can hold and see and, uh, um, uh, and, and, they, and, they, and they typically propagate themselves. Um, probably the most common example of this would be kombucha, the mother of kombucha. Uh, uh, looks like a little rubbery pancake that floats on top of sweet tea and, and, and is the home to a broad community of organisms that ferment the sweet tea uh, uh, underneath it. Um, kefir um, is made from what are called uh, uh, kefir grains, and they look very different. They look like little florets of cauliflower, and you, you know, plop them in the milk, and, and the organisms from the, the kefir grain grow into the milk and ferment uh, 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 lactose and, and, and other nutrients in the milk and, and transform it into this uh, very different tasting kind of a uh, a beverage. Um, so, so those are three kinds of starters. But, but today we're really going to focus on on wild fermentation.